Hey, welcome to Outsmart Your Guitar. Glad you could join us. Today is part three in how to build a solo. We're using a whole new progression now, and it's designed so that you can see the value of importing elements of different styles into your soloing. If the greater context of the song in which the solo exists and the progression over which you'll be playing your solo allows, you can bring things in from other styles to help flesh out a more interesting solo and actually bringing these things in from outside may make the solo exactly what it needs to be. All right, so let's get to it, but make sure you like and subscribe to Outsmart Your Guitar along the way. Let's go. All right, you pretty much know the drill, so we're just gonna go through this. You've got a G, and you can play this G, you can play this G, it's up to you. B minor, C, here we stay in first position, a little more jangly, or you can play this C, that's quite all right. Back to the G, E minor, C add nine. Basically what you're playing is uh, if you play this G, right, with the two fingers there, move these two fingers over, so you're playing like that, but lift your little finger off so that you have the open high E, right? So your third finger's on the second string of the third fret. And then, of course, D, C add nine, D. Now, the progression's pretty straightforward. There's only one deviation, and that is at the end of the progression. So it starts out one, two, three, and four, and one, and mute two, and ghost three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three. So the last two measures, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. All right, <clears throat> that's the essence. So go ahead, pause the video, practice this, get it down, figure out which versions of the chords you want to use, then um, smooth it out. Put it to a metronome. Find out what your tempo is. This song shouldn't be a, played any faster than 112, and even that's a little up-tempo. So if you want to play it a little slower, that's okay. Again, this is for everybody, and you play at the level you're able, and that's all we ask. Therefore, do all that. Get it down. Smooth it out with the metronome. Remember, quality of execution is what you're looking for here, not speed necessarily. Then, once you've got it smoothed out, record it into your looper. All right. Then, after you've done all that and you're ready to move forward, press play. Now that you have the progression recorded into your looper, it's time to start playing around with ideas. So you want to get comfortable with the progression, right? We're in the key of G, and that suggests, because it's very happy sounding overall, that we're in a major key. So the pentatonic major actually is the scale we can use as our core scale. Now, because the chords also suggest the major scale, particularly the application of the B minor, it means we can include the C and the F sharp in notes that we can, uh, as notes we can include in the scale, instead of just strictly pentatonic major, we can add the C and the F sharp. Right? 
So it gives us a little more variety and color that we get to add. So just start playing over the progression to get comfortable. Remember, you got five positions to play through. Take advantage. Three, four. <laughs> So, as you can see, I played a little in first, second, and third position, and I even played behind the root and played some open strings, right? Some of that. Stuff. Borrowing from another style, i.e. country. And that's part of what we're talking about here. This is kind of a, a poppy alternative sort of thing going on here. So alternative borrows from multiple styles, among them country, because it tends to be a little bit more roots oriented and a little less refined, at least originally when it came out. And so you can bring in elements of other styles. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at using open strings. You have a B, a, a G, and a D here. And those are part of, well, that's actually the three notes of the G major um, chord. And you can bring in the C as well. So it allows you to be able to do some cool stuff. You can bring in the F sharp too. So you can bring in all those notes, the open strings. And uh, so try some of that stuff and see what you come up with. Then after spending five, 10 minutes playing around with the open string thing, restart the video. Just want to stop in here for a second and remind you down in the description, you'll see a link to patreon.com outsmart your guitar. Go on over there, subscribe and become a patron. In so doing, you will unlock access to lessons that are not featured here, expanded versions of a number of lessons that are featured here, and you'll have access to all written material that accompanies the videos. Sound good? All right, let's get back to the lesson. All right, I hope you had fun playing with the open string ideas, adding a little bit of country flavor. Uh, also gives you an opportunity to play with hammer-ons and pull-offs as well. Um, so that's always a good exercise, right? So one more thing I want to introduce you to is something you may not be aware of, and it's called a lead-in. A lead-in is where you actually start playing just prior to the solo starting. And for example, I'm going to start on one and do a full measure lead in, and then I'll kick in uh, on after the full measure lead in. So one, two, three, four. For example, right? And you can start anywhere within a measure before the uh, solo starts. So I'm going to start on the and of three, so it's a little bit shorter. One, two, three. Right? 
So a lead in can be four beats long, three beats long, two beats long, a beat and a half, as I just demonstrated there. It can even be just one beat long, right? Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> It's up to you how you want to start your solo, either right on the first beat of the solo section, as we've been doing previously, or adding a bit of a lead in from one to four beats before the solo actually starts. It's all up to you. So what I want you to do is pause and play around with this whole lead in idea and see what you come up with. Then. Once you've done that for a few minutes, restart the video. Now, this progression is a little bit different in that it has two parts to it. You have the G, the B minor, and the C, and back to the G, right? That's the first section. Then the second section starts on the relative minor of the G, which is E minor, C, and D. So I can actually take advantage of that. I'm still playing in the key of G using the pentatonic major and the major scale elements, but when I hit that E minor, I can actually kind of take advantage of that minor sound. All right, so <clears throat> let me show you how I got the essence set up. So I'm gonna start with the lead in too, a beat and a half lead in. One, two, three. <laughs> sets up the next bit, <clears throat> which I want to use a little bit of the country uh, stuff, open string stuff. So I've actually set that up by purposely going down here and getting everything ready to start putting those licks into play, because I want to end with a flurry of notes, create a little more excitement going back into the... Um, the main body of the song. So I'm purposely making the solo very short. Let me give you a sense of what I'm thinking. I'm still kind of embryonic here, so bear with me. <laughs> Two, three. <laughs> And that's kind of what I'm thinking. That's the idea. So you see, I started out with a little flourish, and then kind of slowed down, played a little more ponderously. Then the E minor bit, I, I focused on that just for a moment. And then when it went to the C, I kind of returned to the major feel, setting up the next round of the progression, playing some of those open string licks and working up into a bit of a flurry of notes to finish the solo off. And so that's the whole idea that I want you to play around with. This, this is kind of the idea that I'm suggesting. Use a lead in perhaps if you wish, then uh, play through it and then try to integrate some country licks in the second half. So this way, you get some really nice stuff going and um, a little bit of work to hone it in, to refine it, will get you a really nice little solo. And it, again, it doesn't have to be that long. This thing was maybe 30 seconds long. And that's all it has to be, all right? So you pause the video and go for it and see what you come up with and put in some of those country licks while you're at it. All right. So, there you have it. Now, what I want to discuss about what I just did is 
in explaining what I was doing in that solo I put together, embryonic in form though it may be, is I was actually talking about pacing myself. I started off with a little bit of a flourish and then settled into the main body of the solo with a more melodic approach, but then I set up going to a more country flavored thing using uh, the open strings and hammer-ons and pull-offs to create more excitement at the end of the solo. So I kind of went up, came back down, and then wanted to end on a nice crescendo where the release would come going back into the main body of the song. And this is pacing. In the previous lesson, I talked about tension and release, right? Well, to do good tension and release elements, you need to pace yourself so that your tension builds just right so the release comes at the right moment. Now, if you do multiple tension and releases in a solo, you have to really pay attention to how you put those together so that they work the way you intend, right? That's all about pacing as well. So you can see whether intuitively or deliberately, pacing is an important element in how a solo is going to work or not work in being put together and put into the place where it belongs in the song, right? So you really need to pay attention to a lot of these elements. I introduced the whole idea of a lead-in here today as well. Also explaining how this progression has two sections to it. It has the opening bit and then the thing that's based on the relative minor, changing the tone of the rhythm part so there also can be a change in the tone of the solo as well. All right. Well, I hope this has all made sense to you. All right. And that will do for this lesson. There's more to come. So I'll see you when the next bit is ready for your attention.